I mean, I definitely think uh, th that the age old temptation of the created is that this is what it means. To be made in the image and likeness of God means a lot of things. Like we're image bearers. But one of the things is we get to be creative, which is God is creative. And so we get to do it. And sometimes our affection gets misplaced on the things that we create rather than the creator. So art is a great example of that. Art is a tra it's a transcendental. It's It reflects good, goodness, beauty, and truth. But it it's a... Uh, and it's not just a means to an end. It in and of itself is something good, true, and beautiful, and it reflects God in the world. So you can have art that's just great for art's sake, and and it's it can be sacred. the The problem, though, becomes when the the act of thanksgiving or the act of gratefulness, not from the unbeliever, but from the believer, stops at the created work. Now, there can be a deep appreciation for it. There can be a deep appreciation for a cup of coffee. I mean, I love a good cup of coffee in the morning, and oftentimes I'll do in that first sip uh, can be a moment of gratefulness just to be alive for the gift of life. It's like, thank you, God. But that's the point. The point was it led to a moment where I said, thank you, God. I acknowledged him. He got brought into the conversation. And I think sometimes what happens in, in worship music is that the conversation stops with what we're doing. And so it, it becomes about what we're doing versus always remembering the fact that worship is a, is a heavenly activity that we're trying to participate in. It's happening right now. You and I aren't even taking part of it. It's happening. We don't need to do anything. But what we do on Sunday mornings is we create an environment where once again, we can somehow, um, you know, bypass the laws of physics and be in two places at once. Because our bodies are here, but somehow our souls are now united with heaven and earth. And it's, a, it's real. It's not, it's, not, it's not just imaginative. It's, uh, that's what happens when we worship, you know? The, space the veil between heaven and earth gets real thin and so the, the temptation is that our eyes do get too fixated on material things the how people look how people sound what kind of gear do we have what kind of gear don't we have what kind of songs are we singing what kind of songs aren't we singing and it's all it that's all happened before that's the good news is that the church has struggled with this for 2000 years and probably will continue to in some way, shape, or form. So I do think that those temptations are real and you need to acknowledge them. And just like everything else, just lay it at the foot of the cross. Yeah, idolatry is pretty common pitfall. So if you've made, uh, you know, the act more important um, than the the heart behind it. Confess it. Move on. You know, be forgiven. Move on, and 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 change. Do something to change it. Do something to change your attitude. Do something to or pray for a change of attitude. Pray for a change of heart. I mean, that's what conversion is, right? That's it. And so, just because I'm standing up on a platform singing songs doesn't mean that I don't need to do the same thing. And Lord knows how many times I've needed to confess um, having a misplaced heart when it came to all the stuff, you know? And, you know, that's, it's cyclical, I feel like. Some of these struggles, they, they come back around in different seasons of life. I love that uh, shot, actually. Amen. Sincere in their fifth. No.